the internet has the power to change everything um, and, and all the rules and all the all the cycles that we've been used to throughout history and it's it's done that with education so far and information uh, it's allowed information to be democratized and that's why you see uh, all these incredible trends um, in literacy uh, in the developing world uh, in a way they're more literate than the developed world and that's why most of the top universities today uh, you know have a majority of their uh, of, of their incoming students uh, come from the developing nations. Now imagine that the internet, uh, which is simply a plumbing system that's free, uh, can distribute financial services. So, uh, and, and it has its own currency uh, that anyone could accumulate uh, by, by, through a meritocratic process, which just simply means that if you, if you do better than someone else, you'll be ranked better. There won't be anyone externally pushing you down uh, or deciding that you're worth less or you've done uh, less good. There's, there's a rating system that's very clear. And rating systems are important because they instill discipline. And through discipline, we accumulate savings. And through savings, we have a more stable uh, base for economic growth. And we have more resilient business cycles. And, and that's really how we achieve prosperity and improve the quality of life of our species. But, but one thing that's very important to, to think about when, when, when you're talking about savings and prosperity, and you know, like you said, the meritocracy, you know, meritocracy, there's still an underlying human element that, that you know, when you see people being left behind in, in a system, it, it's, I believe it's a natural instinct to try to, try to help those people. And you know, so so it's, you know, oft, oftentimes you know when you talk about gold or capitalism, uh, there's this there's this idea that, that you know people are just trying to get get the most. Um, I don't believe that's true. I, and and what you have when you have a fair measuring system is you can actually measure and see the people being left behind. And I believe that that creates um, an ability for humans to you know revert to their natural state of, of, of trying to figure out how to create prosperity for everybody. And we just can't do that when our when our number when our measuring stick is always changing. Uh, we don't know why. Uh, you know, uh, you know, two two workers in different parts of the world are, are getting you know completely. You know, one may be completely screwed by them because their measuring stick is just totally volatile uh, in, in their currency. And so, so this you know this this allows people to to, to connect and, and figure out where we need to solve problems. Yeah, think about it this way. When you travel abroad and you go from imperial to metric, it's like the biggest deal. You know, kilometers, miles, yards, feet, uh, inches, centimeters. Well, imagine you had 160 of those in each country. And imagine that the numbers were not fixed but variable. They changed, you know, like a, uh, you know, like a timer, you know. And, and sometimes they grew, sometimes they contracted. That's the kind of system we have today, and, and the predictability is gone. Um, and so this creates a situation where the haves, people like Josh and I, um, are able to game the system. And the way we game the system is we just buy assets. And, and the second we accumulate more cash, we buy more assets. And because we know that the measuring stick will always be eroded and the asset prices will rise. And occasionally, we'll sell some assets, but we just use it to buy other assets. And what this creates is a scenario where we have the least amount of purchasing power decay. So we will always have maximum exposure to assets. And with leverage, we can, have, we can, we can mortgage your exposure. So we can actually uh, leverage someone that's a have not without them even knowing by simply accumulating leverage. Um, but under a gold standard, all of a sudden, our lives get measured by something that has to be mined from the earth with an input of energy and labor. And that is almost like pulling on this rubber band. So it's almost like you know we were running loose. You know, it's like you, you, you give the dog some slack, and then you just pull on it, right? That's what this system will do. Um, but in, re in, re in response or in, in return, what would happen is uh, we would immediately have less. We, we would immediately have less 
and, and, and the rest of the world would have more, and we'd be just fine. We're, we're ready to compete in that world. I'm ready. Um, but, but this current kind of reality that we're, that we're facing is unprecedented. Uh, anyone with any financial knowledge that isn't part of um, you know, the central actors will acknowledge that this is at best an experiment and at worst uh, a, a, a major diversion from how we achieve prosperity over thousands of years. We're really not into fear mongering because we feel that was one of the main impediments that um, the gold community had. Uh, but you know, you really have to question uh, if you read your economic history uh, and you read the various cases of uh, hyperinflation and or abrupt devaluations in currencies, uh, whether all the signs aren't there. Um, it, it seems to me that seven out of 10 or eight out of 10 signs that were present in the Weimar Republic uh, are present now. And that uh, six, six out of 10 or, or seven out of 10 of the signs that were present during uh, John Law uh, are, are present now. And I think that we don't want to see that be the resolution. We really don't. We don't want gold to go to $10,000. Yeah, because if gold goes to 10000 your food prices have gone up 10 times as exactly. well. So you're not getting rich off of that. Um, you're, 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 for the most part, everyone's getting poor. Yeah, what we want to do is we want to, we, we think there's a way out. And we think that the way out, um, the, the way out involves people taking responsibility for their savings and payments, and and having the opportunity to express themselves. Just as we've reached a, a pinnacle of social progress, uh, you know, where, where where we are now able to express ourselves as we please, we're now able to marry who we want, and 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 do what we want. Um, we should be able to use whatever currency we want as long as we're doing it legally. And, and within within the spirit of the law. There's a lot of news about Bitcoin in, in, in Greece and you know what's what's happening there. Well you know I, I think it's a very you know unfortunate situation with what's happening. I don't want to comment too much on the politics or economics, but if you look at the actual use case today uh, with, with something you can do on our platform, uh, say I'm a you know freelance you know uh, graphic designer or someone working in Greece right now that can't access their bank account uh, with you know with a platform like like Bitgold or you know with with an internationally you know accessible platform they could actually be still doing that work and not have to you know they'd actually earn gold on, on the platform so so they could they could send an invoice to Canada I can pay pay with my Canadian credit card they now have you know gold in London. Uh, that they can put onto a euro debit card and, and actually spend euros locally. And and the, the, the you know the where I'm going all of this, the point is that that the gold is always there. It's always fully reserved. There, there's no reason uh, in our system to have a bank run uh, because it's not been over lent out. You know, it's always uh, the person's assets on 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 big gold. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's very interesting when you consider. If everyone in Greece knew about Bitgold, uh, how how that whole crisis would have played out, um, it probably would have played out a lot differently. And I think that our mission in life is to ensure that at, at some point in the future, the next time there will be an inevitable crisis like that, uh, our solution will will help people. And and it definitely did. We did see a spike in Greek signups, but you know, unfortunately, they couldn't use their credit cards at that point. Uh, to fund to fund their Bitcoin accounts, um, but yeah, these are early days. We are extremely thankful, honored. Uh, continue to work hard every day for you, um, and thank you for for the trust that you've placed in us.